BMW's always gone its own way when it comes to hot hatches. It's always put six cylinder engines in them, they've always been rear wheel drive, and they've always looked quite distinctive. This is the new 2 Series Grand Coupe, it's the M235i, and look at it, it's, it's kind of their take on an Audi A3 saloon, it's a bit more traditional than what they would usually do. So as in terms of BMWs, they've completely torn up the recipe book. It's like someone's taking your grand's beloved flapjack recipe and replaced the oats with, I don't know, camels or dandruff or something. A few people on the internet have really got the hump with the way this thing looks. But what do you think? I mean, sure, you get these sharp LED headlights, but you've got this weird 3D effect grille, which BMW says makes it a little bit more M, a little bit sportier. But to me, it just looks like, I don't know, someone's first attempt with a 3D printer. And you've got bigger ducks down here, which I think are real. I can see the front wheels through those. And you've got radiators behind here. This is the top spec one, the M235i, so it needs a bit more cooling for its two litre four cylinder turbocharged engine. But I uh, know this is just a bit, mm, a bit big which seems to be BMW's thing at the moment. It feels like they've bought all of the plastic in the world to make front grills, and they've got to use it all before to start the next tax year, so they're gonna make them as big as possible. At first look, you think, oh, it looks fine. This is perfectly all right. But then you look at the details, and you think the back wheel looks a bit smaller than the front wheel, even though the front wheel is nicely filled by the brake discs. But this bit here looks a bit big. It's a bit, I don't know, it's just not very well balanced. I mean, I can hardly talk about balance and looks, but to me, this isn't very harmonious. Nor is that Portuguese dogging van, which I couldn't get out of the shot. I apologize. And then you come to the back, where you've got BMW's signature L-shaped tail lights here, this little black bar going across, joining them up. And this has got the M performance pack, so you've got this little black spoiler on here, and you've got the black finishes around the exhausts, which I can confirm, a reel. I don't have a stick or anything like that, but if I did, it would go all the way in. The boot's actually a reasonable size as well for this kind of car. It's some litres. I'll put it on the screen. But yeah, it just doesn't quite look as sharp as it could. So how does it drive? I'm in the sporty one, the M235i, blah, blah, blah. It's the four wheel drive one. It's got 306 horsepower some torque and a limited slip differential across the front axle, which helps you, helps pull you out of corners. Is it any fun to drive? Well, it's all right in terms of being a fast cross country thing like an Audi S3 or a Golf R, but you can't really get it to move around and it's just, it's more efficient than playful. So yeah, it's okay. It's probably what you expected it to be. Another 300 horsepower four wheel drive hot hatch. Obviously, when I say it's four-wheel drive, what I really mean is it's front biased four-wheel drive. It's a part-time four-wheel drive system. So in normal drive, it sends the power to the front wheels. And when they get overwhelmed by all the little German torque bears, it sends some to the back and you never really notice it. It just grips and goes like every other car with a system like this. But it also means that you're not going to put your foot down mid corner and suddenly have a load of steering lock on um, because it's drifting. It's just, it just grips and it's fine and it's there for safety really, as much as anything else. One thing that you do miss over the old M240i is the sound. The four cylinder just doesn't sound as good as the six cylinder. It's a fact, and I know I sound like every other bloody car journalist, but this has got fake noise, which isn't particularly convincing. But listen, if I put it in sport mode, hopefully you can hear this. Sounds like one of the cars from Need for Speed 1 on the original PlayStation, or Panasonic 3DO, if you had rich parents. The interior of the 2 Series Grand Coupe is like the interior of the BMW 1 Series, which means it's very pleasant. It's uh, squidgy and everything feels nice. They've replaced all the old kind of trims with these kind of light up plastic things, which in daylight just look a bit more like plastic, but it certainly feels pleasant enough for your 37,000 pounds. 37,000 pounds. Admittedly, this is the top spec one. 
but that's still 37,000 pounds. You can buy a second hand Audi R8 for that money. I think as well, you can customize the hand gestures on this. So if your mother-in-law phones, you can hang out by going like this, <laughs> which is brilliant. That's technology being used for good. A Golf R from memory doesn't struggle as much as this does to get its power down neatly out of corners. So if you're after the last word in cross country hot hatch pace, the Golf R is a better choice than the M235i Grand Coupe. But this in its comfort mode is more comfortable. So if you're after a kind of cross country tour and you've got to live in a place with lots of bumpy roads, I would have this over the Golf. But that's just me. And I'm idiot. The BMW M235i Grand Coupe then, should you buy one? Yes, if you like the way it looks and you like the way it goes and you're not bothered about having the sharpest hot hatch coupe saloon thing there is, then fine. But the Golf R is a bit better to drive and the Mercedes CLA 35 has more drama and is also a bit better to drive and to my eyes looks better. But again, I cannot be the judge of aesthetics. So yes, if you like the way this looks and you like the way it drives, then you should buy one. But that's kind of the rule for every car review, isn't it really, if we we're honest? If you like the way it looks, you're probably gonna buy it. That wasn't very insightful. I'm sorry, I'm staring into the sun, and I'm going to walk out of the frame.